that was just so weird. I mean, I barely stabbed the guy and he burst into coins. Think of which, how much did I get? Two, three, four. Seventy-five, four seventy-five. Better for a takeout. This whole situation has been weird. Scott Pilgrim vs. The World, huh? Whew. That's a film and a half right there, let me tell you that. And I conveniently have the books of which the film is based upon. Why does it feel like I'm taking part of another man's life? Comic book movies are not uncommon. From Superman the movie in 1978 to today's line of Marvel Studios' films, there has been something for everyone in every size, shape and colour. But for the most part, these have been based off more well-known comic book heroes such as Batman or The Incredible Hulk. Very rarely has Hollywood dipped its toes into the world of indie comics and underground cult classics, with films such as Watchmen and Kick-Ass, whose box office made more than their budget. Scott Pilgrim vs. The World was on its way to be the next big box office comic book hit. Oh, was it? Everyone's mad here. <laughs> you guys want to go see a dead body? As you wish. Do you really think you have a chance against us, Mr. Cowboy? yippee ki Let me tell you something. I did not know about Scott Pilgrim until after the trailer for the film was released. And after obviously watching it over and over again, I looked up what it was and found out it was a series of graphic novels. The creator of this series is Brian Lee O'Malley, a half Korean, half French Canadian cartoonist and musician, whose previous work was another graphic novel entitled Lost at Sea. Most of his inspiration comes from the Japanese manga Ramna One Half, as well as its character designer Azuko Nakajima and Yuji Irahara for his exploded page layouts in Kuldelka. Also, for a bit of video game trivia, O'Malley produced the cover art for the indie hit game Fez. Now, I could go on about O'Malley and his influence of Japanese mangas, but this is about the movie and the books it's based upon, so let's move on to the characters. <laughs> Now there are a lot of characters in Scott Pilgrim. Scott, Ramona, Kim, Knives, Wallace, Stephen, Neil, Julie, Stacy, Envy, and the seven evil exes. I'll try to get through this as fast as possible. To start off, there is the main protagonist, Scott Pilgrim, a 23-year-old slacker, whereas in the film he is 22, and is the basis for his band Sex Babom and lives in Toronto, Canada, where the film and series takes place. Ramona Flowers is Scott's main love interest. She reveals very little and is very guarded about her past in New York before she moved to Toronto. Following these two, there is Wallace Wells, Scott's gay roommate, Knives Chow, the once doting girlfriend of Scott before I met Ramona, Kim Pine, Scott's ex-girlfriend and drummer for Sex Bomb, Stephen Still, Scott's friend for university and the talent of Sex Bomb, Young Neil, Sex Bomb's biggest fan next to Knives Chow and Stephen's roommate, Julie Powers, known full-time bitch and a half, Envy Adams, Scott's ex-girlfriend and the lead singer of the band Clash of Demon Head, Stacey Pilgrim, Scott's younger sister, who keeps up to date with current events via text from Wallace. You know me. Wallace! And finally, the seven evil exes. Matthew Patel, Lucas Lee, Todd Ingram, 
Roxanne Roxy Richer, Kalen Ken Katiganagi, and Gideon Gordon Graves. I know that listing this many characters may seem a bit much, but every one of them brings something to the story. Even the very minor characters like Michael Camo. I have to give high marks to the costume designer, the casting director, and the actors themselves for portraying such believable versions of these iconic characters. Moving on. The story revolves around the title character of the series, Scott Pilgrim. He is initially devastated by his breakup with Envy Adams, who he dated through college, and begins dating Knives Chow a year later to enjoy a simple relationship. It is then he meets Ramona Flowers. He first meets Ramona in his dreams, later discovering that one of her subspace roots go through his mind. He meets her in real life at one of Julie's parties. After learning she has a job as a delivery girl for Amazon.ca, Scott orders some CDs in order to confront her. After the initial awkwardness of the situation, they form a relationship. The two begin dating, but Scott is played by Ramona's elusive past and the seven evil exes led by the mysterious Gideon, all of whom challenge him in succession in order to control Ramona's love life. After he had defeated all seven of her exes, Scott and Ramona begin again. I really don't know what to make of this. It sounds stupid. It sounds illogical. <laughs> really, really cool. It's the typical game and anime story trope. The hero must fight powerful bosses and earn experience to rescue the girl. But I've had to take it seriously, it is the most overused story thread of all time. Right next to stop the evil person and save the children. I know it's trying to be ironic and say it's pretty much like a video game, but that only works if it is a game or in some cases a series of graphic novels, which it is. But as a film, it feels very fast paced and even claustrophobic at times, with certain elements just passing you by. That's not mentioned on the geeky references such as the opening shot with the intro melody from Zelda A Link to the Past. Or Ramona pulling a giant hammer out of nowhere which is akin to Amy Rose from Sonic the Hedgehog. Now I better move on the plot elements before I get carried away. Between the film and the books, the overarching plot is the same, but with many scenes, dialogues, subplots, and some characters just drop from the source material altogether to make an average 90 minute film. In fact, the first act of the film, introducing the characters, the situation at hand, up until the fight with Matthew Patel, takes place entirely within the first book. Fights were longer, some of the evil exes had more dialogue, and other characters were either dropped or merely referenced. Heck, the Katiganagi twins don't get one word in. Far be it from me to not disregard the whole of a first sight mentality, but Scott literally wants to start dating Ramona as soon as he meets her. While he's still with knives. I mean, I know he breaks off eventually, but a little common sense is all I'm asking for here. Also, do these evil exes actually die? In fact, does anyone die in this world? We saw Scott die, then come back thanks to an extra life, but that does raise the question if murder can actually be committed. In the obituaries, do they write the game over to John Doe, didn't look both ways? If we take that out of the question, Scott practically commits genocide all for a girl and some loose change. What hurts the film even more is that the sixth book, Scott's Finest Hour, wasn't released until after the movie hit theatres. Edgar Wright, the director of Scott Pilgrim as well as other great comedy films, only got notes from O'Malley during production, thus only those who saw the film never really knew why Gideon took a sudden interest with her when she left him. In the book, it was because he wanted to add her to a sick collection of ex-girlfriends who were in cryostasis. Usually people just take a photo, dude. So, in overall terms of betterness... Okay. Ness, not Ness. Which is superior? The books, or the film? Truth be told, it wasn't a hard question. That's not to say that the film is bad. Completely the opposite. I think the film is great, and I recommend it to all nerds and geeks out there. 
but the books have so much more to offer in terms of story and character development. You can't say I don't know how to put in the show, right? I know some of you are saying, but what about the Scott Pilgrim game? Well, I don't own it. I should, but I don't.